Hey everyone, it's time for another episode of 10K Dollar Day, but we got to make a little confession. In the next episode, you're going to hear some audio that's not quite up to what you normally hear from 10K Dollar Day. You know why? You've got two women in a minivan around the country with lighting gear and audio gear, and um, how many roadies do we have? Mm, Zero. Right. So, we made a little bit of a mistake in our audio settings when we recorded this, but it's such a great episode, we had to bring it to you. So just know, if you're new to 10K Dollar Day, you can find almost any other episode in our feed post, you know, 2019, and the audio will be better, but stick with it, and here we go. 10K Dollar Day, take one. And hi, everybody, and welcome to 10K Dollar Day. I'm Lulu Picard. I'm Allison Burns. And this is the comedy podcast about imaginary... I'm not looking at the camera because I'm looking at the people <laughs> that I can't see because we're in a driveway and it's dark. So um, I'm just... For everybody watching on YouTube, I'm now going to take this opportunity to focus at you. <laughs> hi, everybody. <laughs> welcome to 10K Dollar Day. I'm Lulu Picard. I'm still Allison Burns. That's right. This is the comedy podcast, Can't You Tell, about imaginary luxury travel. We are here, and if you're listening audio-wise with your ears, you're listening to us right here on the 10K Dollar Day feed, where we also do 10K Saturdays, which are bonus interviews and guest features. I'm going to talk about that again in just a second. But you may know us from our 10-minute daily happy podcast. That's in another feed, because we're crazy. (laughs) Or if you're watching this... (laughs) You're on one of our YouTube channels, probably 10K Dollar Day. So here we are. Wave. (laughs) Welcome to the garage. (laughs) We're in North Carolina, home of High Point University. (laughs) (laughs) And we are on location in Greensboro, North Carolina. You hear those crazy people? You do, because we have so much equipment set up. (laughs) Uh, It's crazy. So why are we in North Carolina? A, because we were going crazy in Florida. And B, because this is the first stop on the 10K Driveway Tour 2020. Allison, tell them about it. We're creating a web series. (laughs) 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 Um, We are, and we're going around the country and doing our show in our listeners' driveways and backyards. Tell them about it. (laughs) <laughs> we call it live from blank. That's not going to play as well on the audio portion of this, but the YouTube people <laughs> are with us, I can tell. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you listen to us in the Daily Happy, that's awesome. But here's what you missed if you didn't. Um, Allison, here are three stories from the Daily Happy in the last week. I'm going to ask you if you remember them. Okay. I hope you do because you were there. Do you remember the two restaurants where actors eat free in Midtown right now? No, it's called Mitzi and Vitzi. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's called Nizza and, and Marseille. Marseille. Okay, so close. Do you remember who foiled a kidnapping plan? The FBI. Bum, bum, bum. Interested? Listen to the Daily Happy. Do you remember what animal is getting treatment for toxic water exposure because we can't keep our stuff out of water? A... Uh, yes, I know this. Uh, uh, ooh, uh, it's not a dolphin. Ding, ding, ding. It's, it's not a, a sea dolphin, lion. it's a sea lion. Okay, there we go. Awesome. You probably knew the answers. Um, just from listening, we don't know the answers, and we do the podcast, so that's good. Uh, now, I'm sure that if you listen to us on 10K Saturday, you've heard one of our favorite days, Michael Torex 10K Saturday. Woo! Woo! What, what? So exciting, and... I'm not, listen, don't go stalk him or anything, but this is his garage. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, we didn't geotag this, Michael. Could you imagine yeah. if we were like, this is geotagged, go find it. Yeah. Um, so we're so excited that he's hosting us here in Greensboro. I, like I said, this is our first stop. And uh, I'm just using my phone. Hi, welcome to my life. And we have had a great trip so far. We are on day two, mm-hmm. but just as a quick update for our bays, because we're here because of you and because it came up. Uh, in a social with you, and also because <laughs> you donated to our Indiegogo, because you're amazing. So we drove from Orlando on Saturday the 10th, and everything I'm about to tell you was just in one day. <laughs> 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 we drove from Orlando, we stopped in Lumberton, North Carolina. Uh, 
We drove to Orlando. We ate a cookout. We stopped in Lumberton, North Carolina. We also stopped at a Stuckey's and got my very first pecan roll. Yeah, that she didn't even open. <laughs> but I hear it's delicious. It's so delicious. Yeah. Well, my sister was really excited when I told her. And then we went to Lumberton, North Carolina and stopped at the Carolina Carolina Civic Theater, Civic mm -hmm. Center, and saw Chamber Soul. Chamber Soul with Shauna Tucker and Christian Tamber. They were doing a live stream. If you are listening to this in time on Wednesday, then this Saturday on the 17th on Carolina Civic Center's Facebook page. They will be showing that live stream for free. They're amazing. We got to see them doing their set, their entire pre-recorded set. We were allowed to walk around the theater, mm -hmm. and it was the first time I'd been in a theater in months and months and months. Yeah. And we walked in. Well, you know what? Al <laughs> I'm gonna because I know Allison gets emotional. So Allison, <laughs> tell them about walking oh in because no. they were in the middle. They were in the middle of doing their set when we got to the theater. The the sound engineer let us in. And so they were literally in the middle of taping Allison Burns. Okay. So uh, this is what happened. We walked in, and you hear just, like, music of angels coming <laughs> off of that stage. And there is a, a three-piece band and a beautiful singer. And I haven't been inside a theater since before March when a show that I was actually directing closed suddenly. And so to be in that space and see her performing – and experience live music for the first time in like nine months was I wasn't expecting the reaction that I had and I got so overwhelmed and I was just like sobbing I was like these people think I'm crazy because I'm this rando that like just walked in. I didn't know anyone it was her friend no one's ever seen me and I'm just I'm the only person <laughs> in the audience besides Lulu and I'm just like <laughs> just <laughs> sobbing but they were lovely. It was so cool to experience live music again, and it just proves that um, you can't beat it. So it's got to come back. <laughs> <laughs> it was Ugh. also um, – it was so surreal being the only – people watching it yeah so uh, and granted i've done that before for rehearsals right like you, yeah. you've sat in the theater for rehearsals before and you're the only person watching it but this was something you had not been in the rehearsal process for right you didn't know anything about it mm -hmm. and it was fully fleshed out it yeah. was a full show mm -hmm. for us <laughs> yeah you know and and it's going to be streamed out but um yeah it was both and it was the first day of the tour, and we had just driven eight hours, and there was a lot of emotions, <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of exhaustion, and a lot of, <laughs> um, and it was just, it was just beautiful. Yeah. So whenever your first time is, everyone that you get to go back and see something live, mm. I would suggest being prepared for it and living in that moment because it was awesome. Yeah, mm. we did it for the first time. Here, here. I hope we can do it again. <laughs> um. Okay, we do have people here in the driveway, so we're in the garage. Picture this, picture Sicily. This. <laughs> uh, picture this, Greensboro. We're in a garage, okay, obviously, and our audience, can you guys say hey? Hey! hey. Oh, hello. hello. They are in the driveway, so mm -hmm. don't forget we're doing everything super safe. Allison and I have, have created our own quarantine pod for this trip. We went into quarantine before the trip, and we're going back into quarantine again after the trip to keep the people we love and live with safe. And so we are doing everything we can. We're wearing masks in the houses. We're doing all the things. But um, it's been amazing. So we saw Christian Tambor and Shauna Tucker play at Carolina Theater. Then we stayed with the amazing Amy in Greensboro. Thank you so much for letting us stay with you because, you know, why not stay in listeners' houses? It's weird, but it's cool. And um, for all of the people playing at home on the road trip, we did not stop at South of the Border. I know you were wondering. But I saw it. <laughs> what did you think? It was crazy. It looks like some from something out of a movie. Have you guys ever seen uh, Zombieland? Yeah. yeah. That's what it reminded me of. Because? Because don't they, like, meet on, like, in an amusement park and fight zombies? Yes. That is, like, where they should have filmed it. South of the border. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like that's right. Like if I had to choose a location shoot for my zombie movie, <laughs> it would be south <laughs> of the border. <laughs> well, I think they're available. <laughs> you should just call them. And I have a great camera. It's true. We're ready <laughs> to do it. We're ready to do it. Okay. 
So um, if you'd like to get in contact with 10K Dollar Day, it's super, super easy, and we love getting emails. Just ask Mike Torek because he sends us dad jokes all the time, <laughs> and we love it. Uh, 10K Dollar Day gmail.com is how to reach us. You can also find us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Instagram and, uh, Instagram and Twitter, super easy, at 10K Dollar Day. If you look for us on Facebook, you're going to want to look for that group, 10K Dollar Days, B-A-E-S, and we will see you there. It's lots of fun, but let's move on. All right. All right. Allison Burns. Yes. What is your obsession this week? My obsession is the black magic. Oh. I love it. It's our camera. It's what you guys are seeing us on. And uh, I've kind of figured it out. Yeah. So I feel like I'm like a way more tech savvy than I was 24 hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that happens every day in 2020. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. You just have to adapt. Um, and I love it. I think it's great. Some great pictures. I love the zoom uh, option with the red lines. Uh -huh. Or like the focus option. Okay, everyone. Yeah. If you've never had a super fancy camera, can we talk about the fact it tells you when you're focusing? Yeah. <laughs> it tells you. It's everything goes red, and then you don't have to guess anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of feel like when you first find out that rich people don't pay for anything, <laughs> like they're rich, and then they also get everything for free, and I'm like, why do cinematographers have... Why does our camera tell them they focus? <laughs> the people who need to know they can't focus are the people who don't use cameras. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. The Tell rich the get richer. Yep. And in the every industry. And the camera people get. What's your obsession? My obsession <laughs> is uh, my obsession is Shauna Tucker, <laughs> and she uh, doesn't even know that. I don't she even doesn't know to podcasts. It. I don't know, but that singer that we saw of Chamber Soul. So good. Wait, she's not just a singer. And Allison said they were a three-person band, but they're actually a four-person band. Oh, that's right, because she plays the cello. And the guitar. And the guitar. And she sings. And, and she's, yeah. she plays counter melodies on the cello while she sings. Mm. She's incredible. And yeah. it's funky and jazzy and happy. And she's charismatic and she's uh, fun. And you can just feel her energy come off the stage. And I can't imagine a better first reintroduction to live performance than watching her. Yeah. She was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, what is on your wish list? Oh, my wish list. Did I wish for this already? You say that every week. I want I want a roadie. <laughs> 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 well, you might have wished for it uh, in like on specific gigs, back but back I think right, right now you <laughs> viscerally want a roadie. Yeah, I want a roadie. Um, because how many people are in the van? Two. Right. Uh, so besides you and me, how many people are in the van? None. Exactly. <laughs> My um, <laughs> wish list <laughs> is, I have wished for this before, but this is very specific to this moment in time. Okay. I you want a roadie. <laughs> 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 like. Yes, you're right. I want a roadie. Um, actually, kind of. Okay, so I want a roadie mm -hmm. because without a roadie, I need a massage. <laughs> the roadie could give you a massage. <laughs> if the roadie is giving me a massage. It gets weird. Yeah, that's not a job I'd combine or <laughs> pass in know. the van. <laughs> I don't know. No. <laughs> that's Ayatsi and Yatsi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, you know what we didn't, we didn't think about is the fact that driving is hard on your body because you're just sitting yeah. for a really long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, um, but I always want a massage. Let's be, let's be clear. It's just an excuse for another massage. So I'm gonna say massage, even okay. though it's kind of a cop out, but not really. That's a good wish list. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like it. And now it's time for <gasps> 10K, 10K days. Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay, you or me? Oh, let's let the audience decide. Oh. Grace, uh -oh. who goes first? Grace, who goes first? Lulu or Allison? Pick one. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let me fire up my professional iPhone note taker. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want a roadie so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Just a third person. <laughs> um, <sighs> I'm going to Easter Island. Ooh. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Easter Island. Easter Island. Easter Island. Easter Island. I'm just going to keep saying it okay. because I don't know. Oh, you, or you might know it by its native name, Rapa Nui. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> Still doesn't ring a bell. <laughs> it's the most isolated inhabited place on Earth. What? Wait, what? Okay, let's break that down, yeah? Yeah. Okay, it's inhabited. 
people are there. And it is the most isolated place on Earth. But nobody can find it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, there's only two ways to get there. You can get there, you can fly there from Chile. Okay. Which is the governing country to Eastern okay. Island, which I didn't know. That's interesting. Or from Tahiti. Oh, okay. So it's kind of halfway through, halfway between those two. But it is the place in the world that other populations are the farthest away from. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. They're the most yeah. I don't know, but what about Antarctica? I don't think people live there. Scientists do. <laughs> but not, it's not the most inhabited. Did. It doesn't Habit say the most. It says the most isolated inhabited place on Earth. And exactly. If you're a scientist and you live in Antarctica, but you it's are not the most inhabit. But it's not the most isolated inhabited. They're probably the least isolated inhabited. <laughs> no, 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 that's yeah, didn't work no, out. because mm -hmm. if there's not that many people living on Antarctica, Correct. even though it is isolated, it's not the most wait, isolated wait. Mm -mm. inhabited. Do you mean it's isolated but not the most inhabited? That's what I said. <laughs> You'll edit this. You'll hear it back. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to stay at the Hangaroa Eco Village and Spa. Ooh. Yeah. These rooms are awesome. They look like super posh hobbit houses. Oh. Right? Because there's a lot of, like, half circles. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, half circles over the bed, half circles over the door, and then you can see the beach, and it's super gorgeous. Oh, think of this as, like, Tahiti Bora Bora land. Okay. Gotcha, okay. Gotcha, so gotcha, that's gotcha. the kind of beachy, mm -hmm. tropical -y vibe that we have gotcha. Polynesian super Polynesian these double height rooms feature a guest bathroom okay a spacious living room uh -huh. sofa bed and desk made on construction uh. made on construction what uh. oh it's not okay I had to try to figure this out what I think it means because I looked at the pictures are that they are built the like you know your bed and then you have the bed frame uh -huh. the bed frame is built into the walls mm. So uh -huh. it's constructed, the sofa bed and the desk are constructed into the wall, if that oh makes gotcha, sense. Oh, gosh, so you can't move like it. Mm -mm, and it almost looks like clay that they, or clay oh. or stone that they had kind of molded out to be a okay, piece of gotcha. furniture, and, but it's attached to the wall. Does that yes, make sense? Yes, yes, I'm picturing it. Okay, there's also a shower, a telephone, blah, 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 blah. They do not have television because they seek disconnection oh. and to concentrate the senses in experiencing the wonders of Rapa Nui. Oh. So it's like a tomb. <laughs> what? <laughs> you you switched that real fast. No, you know, like, cause, no, like a tomb, it's a circle. It's where you die. <laughs> Besides that, right. but it's like a circle, and right. they have the little part that's built into the rock that comes out oh. where you lay down. I see. Okay, it's very close to a tomb, but it has a normal door and not a stone you have to keep moving past back and forth. Mm. But other yeah. than that, let's go tomb. Is that cool? Yeah. All right, so <laughs> breakfast is at the hotel because it's a fancy hotel. Yeah. You know how that goes. And then I'm going to get a car because I found a couple travel blogs, and it said the best way to see Easter Island is absolutely on your own and with a car. Okay. So the average cost for a car rental in Easter Island is 80 bucks for the day. Okay. Which is more than what we're paying for that minivan we're on a road with, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. I am going to get the best car they have. Don't know what that is. But I'm going to guess that I'm going to pay 150 bucks for the day. Including everything. Okay. Okay. So I, I said that. Did I tell you how much that house was? No. 2000 bucks for two nights. Okay. So we're already up. Okay. Not super up, but kind of up. Now, Allison. Yes. I think from the way that you reacted when I said I was going to Easter Island, I will know the answer to this question. But when you think of Easter Island, is there anything you think of? A landmark? A something that you would see a picture of? Jesus? Is that why you thought of two? <laughs> Subconsciously, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I hate that that totally makes sense. <laughs> uh, but it wasn't what I was going for. So uh, I'll ask the audience. The stone, stone heads. heads. Stone heads. The stone heads. Stone. He rolled the stone <laughs> away. <laughs> And then the bunny came. We have come full circle. You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. So they have these <laughs> giant statues yeah. all over the island that are called Moai statues. Okay. Okay. Can you picture that at all? Yes, I can. You can? Yeah. In fact, the second you guys said it, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I thought you wouldn't be able to, so I had yeah, a they're game big heads. for you. I had a game for you to picture it. Well, let's play it. Oh, okay. Thanks. That's <laughs> what I was going for. Picture the rock. <laughs> Now imagine him 
in a movie where he's cast as Frankenstein. Okay, now I got it. Make his head bigger than the rest of his body. It already <laughs> is. <laughs> now make him pout. Okay. <laughs> That's a Moai statue. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah, totally, right? Yeah. So <laughs> over 63 miles, I believe, is the is is what Easter Island is, like area-wise. There are 887 of these statues. There's, lot, there's lots of them. Okay. They were constructed around 1200 or 1600 A.D., which we now know can also be called uh, C.E. C-E? C-E? For common era. That's right. You just learned that. Okay, it's all right. Constructed around 1200 to 1600 AD or common era. They look into the island, not to the sea. They look inland. Is there a reason for that? Yes. Can I know what it is? It's really cool, actually. So the Moai are are all, um, they are all real people. They are living faces, or faces of people who lived, who were then raised to uh, like deified status by okay. those villages, yeah. and each of those heads looks toward the village that they're from. Mm. Oh, that's so cool. Isn't that cool? I want one of those. I know. Well, you have to have an ancestor that you consider a god. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, in 1722 is when Europeans first visited the island, and all of the statues were, in, you know, in the right place and gazing inland. But by the latter part of the 19th century, they had all been toppled over. Mm. All of them? All. It says all of them. Oh. Yeah, Ooh. it says all of them. But they have restored a lot of them, so you can go to them. You can go see them. That's cool. Um, obviously, you can take. Pi- it's a huge photography place to go. You know, like mm-hmm. people love to go and take amazing pictures and 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 things like that. I've obviously <laughs> never taken. <laughs> <laughs> of a th- vacation just to take pictures. So I'm like, people go there to take pictures. <laughs> but it sounds cool. <laughs> uh, their Instagram is <laughs> popping. Okay. So we're going to go to Rano Raraku. So many R's. Yeah. Rano Raraku is where all the Moai, those things, were hand carved to be transported to where they were going to be on the island. They okay. were all carved in the same place. And you can find Moai there of all stages of construction. So, oh. like, barely carved to fully carved, but Ooh. they were just kind of abandoned in different phases. Yeah. So, that's really interesting. We're going to go there. There's no cost. Yeah. You just go. But you can only go once oh. on your trip. Why? It's protected. So, you have so to it's, it's um, they control how many people come in, and they control it based on your, like, nationality. So you can only go once during your your s- if you are a traveler, a visitor to Easter Island, uh-huh. you're only allowed to enter they like that once. Stamp your passport or something. They have a Take national a park. You? you have to buy a national park kind of pass thing, and uh-huh. then there, uh, it you're only allowed to access that once. Okay, wow. I was just thinking you could just make another email account. <laughs> <laughs> That's just go. But wha- but they have a rule. <laughs> no, I get it's it. For good reasons. <laughs> Why do you want to go ruin the Moai? Is no, it no, I'm not ruining it. Is it because you identify with those white Europeans who first <laughs> visited the island in 1722? Aww. Aww. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, everyone. That was too far for the, <laughs> <laughs> for the driveway. <laughs> they were like, whoa, let's <laughs> take the... I'm just going to keep drinking. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go to the local post office in Hungaroa. Hungaroa is like the big city, like the main city that yeah. you would go to as a tourist. And for a donation, they will stamp your passport... Okay. With a legal stamp, because otherwise you don't get a stamp going to um, Easter Island. But if you go to the post office for a donation, they will stamp a passport stamp with the heads on them. Oh. It's wow. one of the coolest stamps I've ever seen. It's like three heads, and it's like, boom, and it says Easter Island. That's Isn't that cool? cool? So I'm going to give them a donation, 500 bucks. Wow. Right? Yeah. Because <laughs> I have to spend 10000 And then it's time to have lunch at Obudumond, <laughs> because a... Easter Island is owned by Chile, and the ch- restaurant's named in French. I don't know. There's no website. There are two dollar signs on Google. Okay. Okay. And I was like, oh, let me see if I can find a website anyway. Allison Burns. What? That website domain is for sale. What is it? Oh, Boutumond. Dot com? It's, I think it's like restaurant.com or something like that. But yes, it is for sale. I'm going to buy it. I bought it <gasps> in my day. You know oh, what? I thought you meant for real. I was like, no. we're going to be millionaires when they come after us. 
<laughs> no, I just bought it in my day. But guess what? They used to have that site, and they let it lapse, which means now it's worth more money. So I had to buy it for $2,095. <gasps> and then they're going to have to come after you and be like, hey, we need our site back. And you're going to be like, yeah, like for $5,000. Oh, I was going to say $500,000. $500,000. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so I'm going to go. I guess I'll have lunch there. I actually didn't put the lunch in here, but I did put the website. So we'll just pretend that it also includes my lunch. That's $2,095. <laughs> and then I'm going to buy a tiki totem, seven feet tall, featuring a moai and big kahuna. So here's the thing. Big kahuna is actually a Hawaiian god, mm -hmm. but this is by a Polynesian artist. I looked up like an official one by a Polynesian artist who just includes all sorts of religious and spiritual things from all over Polynesia. That tiki totem is $1,290. How big is it? Seven feet tall. Oh, that's worth it. And it's carved out of a solid palm tree. Ooh. And uh, what it says is, it's a perfect tiki for any tiki collector. <laughs> 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 or for the tropical home. Oh. <laughs> if you collect tikis, <laughs> can you email us at 10 day at gmail.com? <laughs> In fact, if anyone out there legit like collects legit. tiki's, we will change the name of this podcast to tikidollarday.com <laughs> just because it's fun. And then we'll change it back because we've done a lot of work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, just for, you'll get like an hour. You'll get an, uh, an hour. You, you can have our domain name for one hour. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Michael Torque said, I'm going to start collecting <laughs> tiki's. Great. <laughs> here we go. You can call it like the tiki Torah cut. <laughs> That's so good. I mean, you're welcome. Well, thank you. All right. So next up, yes. the historic Orongo Village. Ooh, what's there? Well, the Birdman competition. No. The Birdman competition. What do you think that is? Oh well. Oh, I mean, if we were in the U.S., I would say <laughs> it's probably a very different. Like, <laughs> no, I want to know what it would be in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we were here, it would probably be either like a chicken eating contest. <laughs> Or, <laughs> like, a photography contest okay. of, like, pictures of birds. Okay. But over there at Easter Island, yeah. it probably is something oh, really, like, ceremonious. Yes. Like, like uh, feathers involved on uh, – no, I, I was thinking more like um, – like – uh, <laughs> um, oh <laughs> this is going to be really hard. Okay. <laughs> like swimmers swimming and climbing a mountain and um, reaching the top. It's like a triathlon, and, like, the first person who makes it becomes the bird man. <laughs> <laughs> and a king. <laughs> yes, the <a> king! <laughs> oh. Okay. So each village in Easter Island would send a representative to this <laughs> contest once a year. <gasps> it's okay. like the Hunger Games. Well, no one died. Oh. <laughs> okay. So then they would, like, they had a swimming contest. You just swim to another island. And then there was a climbing contest. And the point was to get the first bird's egg of the season. Mm. And whomever got that bird's egg, their village got to rule the whole island for the year. But what happened to the baby bird? <laughs> <laughs> then I'm going to go get a tattoo. From uh, <laughs> 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 it's an imaginary day, so don't you know? <laughs> I'm gonna get a tattoo from Andres Panda Pacariti. He has been tattooing Polynesian style art for over 25 years. Ooh. Now listen, I don't know who said that in the back. He said ooh, but you're right. I support that ooh. You know me very well. I probably wouldn't get a tattoo <laughs> on vacation <laughs> in Polynesia unless I was super drunk and it was on the small of my back. But <laughs> I. <laughs> But I wanted to do, I wanted to do, I wanted to get a Polynesian tattoo. So I still had to stay true to my heart. But I want it to be very complex because he's extremely talented. Yeah. But also very, very tiny because I don't really want that tattoo. Yeah. So I'm thinking something like, you know, like when you go to the mall and they put your name on a grain of rice? No. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Do you guys know what I'm talking about? No. Yes. Yes. No. Okay, yes. Why yes. we are oh, split it's divided. half and half. It's yes. divided. It's the Millennial Mall in Orlando. 
That's why. It's at one mall. It's at her it's mall. Not, it's not at one mall. It's not at one there mall. There is one person in Orlando no. who puts <laughs> names on rice. At, at Universal? It, it's, yeah, you see kiosks at theme parks or like yeah. or malls or something like that, but it's a kiosk, online? right? We're not talking about a store. This is on only rice. Yeah, so yeah. it was like. Then what do you do with it after that? Exactly. No, it's like a r- like this rice. Y- yes. What rice do rice. You, where do you put it? Uh, um, in a. <laughs> uh, you, you would put it in like a teeny tiny little bottle and you wear it around your neck. Whoa! <laughs> like a talisman? Yeah, like a talisman. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. That's <laughs> that's a, that's you know that's like so Filipino though. It's like in case of emergency, break this, <laughs> and I just got like a crane. <laughs> my emergency contacts on it. <laughs> oh, I have my phone number. Call my mom. <laughs> I call my mom if I. Oh my god, I'm getting that for your mom for Christmas. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, okay, so anyway, <laughs> you know, like how with the mall, <laughs> there are these people that have you paint your name on a grain of rice. Yes. yes. Okay, I do want a tiny tattoo, so I want them to paint my name on a picture of a grain of rice that has my name on it. <laughs> okay. Like so, like so tiny and then like a little meta, like a meta tiny. Okay. Like so tiny, like so Okay. Okay. Um, mm. and I was like, oh, you know, if I'm gonna go get a tattoo, and it's so complex, mm-hmm. can you picture him like with like a magnifying glass? I mean, but <laughs> it's really not that complex. It's literally an oval <laughs> with like L U, L U, on the small of your back. <laughs> it, it, yeah, but it's tiny. <laughs> they have to use the small, like a little needle, like a tsh, little needle. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. Do you? I do. Continue. So I felt that if I'm getting a tattoo, I should document that. Yes. Because that'd be interesting. Sure. <laughs> so I got a camera. I got the black magic. <laughs> <laughs> um, 6K, because I upgraded us. Because oh, okay. we don't have the 6K. We That's have the right. black magic uh, 4K. 4K. The Black Magic 6K is 19.95. Ooh. And there's no decimal there, guys. This is fancy. <laughs> And then um, I'm going to plan for what we didn't plan for, and I'm also going to get all the accessories. <laughs> so that's a thousand bucks. Okay. I want a grip. I want a cage. Yeah. I want a thing. I yeah. probably want a roadie. Yeah. Oh, that's in there too. Um, okay. So here's the thing. So I have a black magic. I've got some equipment. I'm getting a tattoo. I'm in a beautiful place, blah, blah, blah. What am I going to do with my footage from the black magic? Is this a rhetorical question? No, it's a question that I think you probably have an answer for. You're going to... That I would put into my day. Oh, something new? Something that I would need to do... With the camera? With the stuff on the camera. You're going to make a video. Right. A music video. A YouTube video. This is getting so specific. I didn't plan that far. (laughs) Okay. No, I'm just going to have someone help me edit it. Oh. And I'm going to bring our editing bay... Greg Monteith, <laughs> who um, has been so helpful with us for helping us pick the camera, do some editing work, because he is a professional videographer, and he's been such an amazing supporter and bay for us. So here's the deal. Greg, I know you're listening, and I know you're professional, and I need you to know between you and me, I know you are worth so much money. I also need you to know that all I have left in my $10,000 day is $470. <laughs> okay? Okay, buddy? All right. So I'm going to need you to go cash in those frequent flyer miles. I cannot fly you (laughs) over to Easter Island, but I I can give you $470, and then I'm going to give you my dinner at the hotel because I literally have no more money, and that brings me to (gasps) $10,000. Easter Island. That's amazing. Thank you. Next. (laughs) I'm going to Phillips. Phillipsburg, Montana. We can say that again. <laughs> Phillipsburg, Montana. Woo! Yeah. What's in Phillipsburg, Montana? Well, one thing that's there is the ranch at Rock Creek. Oh. Wait, is this like wide open spaces? This is Western Adventure with lavish, all inclusive amenities. <gasps> I love that. That's like so a good. hotel that's also a roadie. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's the best good. of both worlds. Okay. So 
they have three different properties on this ranch that you can choose to stay at. I'm picking the Homestead Barn. It was remodeled, and it, it says, enjoy a lawn of wildflowers and native grasses. And the barn itself is so big that there's actually three accommodations inside. So it has three different parts of the barn that you can rent. Oh. So if you only rent one, there could be other people staying there, but they're very divided. It's like, you know, its own, like, little Airbnb. But I, of course, wanted to buy the whole thing. So yeah. I went, and I looked at the prices. It's winter season, so winter prices. Here we go. The Wrangler, which is one of the bedroom places, is eighteen hundred per night. Ooh. Okay, per night. Yes, the Loft is twenty two hundred <gasps> per night, and the Stables <laughs> is twenty six hundred per night. The Stables. Yes. The stables. The stables. Where the horses live? Well, it's not. <laughs> they've redone it. They've redone it. It's, you know. I don't know. So once a horse has lived in your house, a horse has always lived in your house. It's true. But okay. it was, you know, remodeled. Um, so even I can do that math. Obviously, two nights in that barn, way over 10K. Right. right? So you're coming with me. Okay. And so are Michael and Sarah. Yay! Yay! Our hosts in Greensboro. Okay. So, but we have to split the barn costs. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> now to rent the entire barn, though, you guys, is only $4,400 per <laughs> person. Okay. So say it with me. That's more like it. <laughs> okay, good. Now it's important to note that each accommodation is equipped with personal mountain bikes so that we can do on ranch transportation. Ah, right? They don't even have cars? <laughs> it's a ranch. Shouldn't you ride a horse? Well, that or a bike. They're too busy living in your house. Okay. So, obviously, we need helmets for protection. So, did you know, you guys, <laughs> that they make cowboy hat bike helmets? No. <laughs> no way. They Wait, do. for real, though? Yes, for real. I'm not making this up. <laughs> yes. So, Wait. for $249.99, you, too, can own a Resistal Ride Safe Western Hat Helmet. Wow. Wait. I think they're really for horseback riding, like competitive horseback riding. Wait. Let's I'm be confused. honest. I'm, wait, listen. Hold on. Uh -huh. So you have a helmet on. Yes. And then is there just a big brim? Yes. Mm. Well, no, it's a hat. It's a hat over the helmet. I mean, it's a hat helmet. <laughs> like, it's a hat, but it has the helmet inside the hat. Why is it so hard to understand? <laughs> How is that not hard to understand? <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> you have to keep saying hat and helmet. Here's the thing. A helmet covers... All of here, and a hat only covers from here to here. No. So, does a it helmet? Okay, it's like this helmet, helmet, and then over it, hat. Hat. <laughs> How much is that? Two hundred forty-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. <laughs> Some people got money. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So. I'm going to, because you guys came to stay with me, I'm actually going to gift you your <laughs> helmets. Yay. So you don't have to pay for those. So my total cost for all four helmets, $999.96. That's so much money. So much money, but totally worth it. Okay. <laughs> all right. So um, breakfast time. Did I mention it was all inclusive? Yes. yes. Oh, it's all inclusive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you just put that anywhere. So, I mean, when it's all inclusive, that makes the 4400 sound a little bit better. Because then you get to eat all of your meals there. I would eat all of the meals I needed for one year there <laughs> at one time. Yeah. To get my money's worth. Yeah. Okay. So, we're going to have what they make daily, which is freshly made pastries, coffee, and tea that arrive to your doorstep every morning. Oh, really? Yes. And that's in addition to if you actually went and had their breakfast buffet. That's not your breakfast. No. That's like... Wake up and you have treats waiting at your door. <laughs> I know. Okay, I'm in. I know. I'm in. Okay, then we've had our breakfast, you guys. Our Western Dude Ranch adventure awaits. Yeah. So, okay, before I talk about this, do you guys know, you know, Dude Ranch, right? Has anyone ever seen Hey Dude? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hey Dude. Yeah, yippee ki yay yay, yippee ki yay, what? That's the cowboy way. <laughs> Sing it again now. You be kai yay Get along, little darling, till the break of day. Watch out for those man-eating jackrabbits. You know the and those thing? killer cacti. <laughs> hey, dude. That's it. I, <laughs> I don't think we, I think we can only oh, use like three seconds of no, that I know. due to copyright. No, so it's over now. Okay, and cool. 
here's the thing. I was obsessed with that show as a kid. I was probably your age, Grace. And I wrote them. You like to write, right? Yeah. I wrote them letters like every week. The cast? Uh, the, I don't know. Hey, dude. <laughs> I don't know what I would send them to. But I had created a whole storyline where they needed to cast me as Brad's younger sister. So I would be brought onto the ranch as Brad's younger sister and have this whole, and I would write out the story and send it to them every week. And they never picked it up. <laughs> yeah. Lulu needs another drink. <laughs> okay. So basically I'm fulfilling my childhood fantasy here. And... Uh, I just wish Brad were there. Lulu, you'll have to do. This is okay. so spicy. This one. <laughs> <laughs> this, it's real spicy. This was jalapeno vodka, and I forgot that until halfway through the bit. <laughs> and it's so spicy. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you going to cry, Lulu? She is crying. It's really delicious. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah, for making this. She infuses her own vodka. <laughs> So Your good. commitment, though. <laughs> I did. Well, that's the thing. My thought process was really complex during that because I was also trying to time myself to finish at the end of whatever you were going to yeah. say, but I didn't know what you yeah. were going to say. So I was, like, gulping really fast, yeah. and then I had to slow down. And you know when you eat spicy food and you yeah. go slowly, it's even worse. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't real. I had paused a little because I was going slowly, and that's when your mouth goes, hey, that's hot. <laughs> so my I was, like, in the middle of the drinking. I was like, dude, 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 stop. Hey, hey, stop, stop it, stop it. Yeah. And I was just going on and on. And you know you don't even know. You don't even know what's happening. And the hardest part is you don't know when the next person is going to stop talking, so you don't know how to measure <laughs> when you're going to finish it because then what if they keep going and they go into a total other direction they have another thing to say and you're stuck there doing the bit it's really hard to plan that way but luckily if it's spicy then it just kind of gives you that little bit of reaction and you know what's happening <laughs> so um activities so on their website, they have this handy dandy little filter where you can click the season. Okay, so it's winter. So I clicked winter. And then it gives you three options, romance, family, or corporate. Oh. So on the count of three, okay. I want everyone to yell out what you think the best choice is for Lulu, myself, Michael, and Sarah. <laughs> Ready? One, <laughs> two, three. Romance! romance. <laughs> Who said romance? I did. Yes, did. you're with me. Okay, I, both Sarahs did. Okay, both Sarahs. <laughs> Good, Sarah. We're on the same page. We picked romance. Okay. <laughs> so first, we're gonna do a photography workshop and scavenger hunt. Oh, oh that's romance. <laughs> yeah. So what's cool is you get to download a scavenger hunt onto your smartphone. Okay. And then you venture into their 6,600 acre photography studio, which is wait, the I'm sorry, outdoors. Wait. 66. Hundred acre <laughs> photography studio. Well, it's the outdoors. <laughs> okay, hipsters. Yeah, <laughs> calm down. And your you marketing. Take, and you take pictures of Montana's wildlife, ranch life, and seasonal beauty in flux. Oh, I love that. Right. Yeah. So what's, here's what's cool. They provide Sony mirrorless digital cameras for you to take. What? Yeah. I mean, don't to keep get to keep them, but. We you should go them. there and film a web series. I know, right? <laughs> Just use all their cameras. So they didn't mention a prize for whoever wins the scavenger hunt. Among your pod? Yeah. So Michael Torek. Is there? <gasps> I don't need a roadie. Okay. I don't need a roadie. I need Michael Torek. Yeah. Here's this what happened. Is. This is what happened. You guys watched a wish list <laughs> come true <laughs> is what right happened. Right here on 10K Dollar Day. <laughs> Real time wish list, you guys. Green, guys, magic happens in Greensboro. Get yes. out there. Yeah. Get thee to the Piedmont. <laughs> this is the Piedmont, right? Yes. Get thee to the Piedmont. <laughs> What's the Piedmont? I thought we were in Greensboro. Literally, no idea. I've just seen it on signs. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so they didn't mention a prize, whoever wins a scavenger hunt. I was like, well, then it's not like a hunt, right? It's still a hunt, even if you no, still. Oh, you're one of those prize people? Yes. You're competitive. Well, yeah. Well, can't you just do it for the fun of it? Oh, my God. Montessori. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at you, world. Not everybody's a winner. Okay? So I am going to purchase a prize 
for us to fight over, okay? So Sarah, Michael, Lulu, and I are going to go on the scavenger hunt, and yeah. whoever finishes the scavenger hunt first is going to get a pony. Oh. Whoa, yeah. what? So I bought a pony. Wait, what? Um, yep, it's from equine.com. This pony lives right there in Montana. It's an Isabella Gelding pony. Uh, its name, I don't know if it's a his or her, is Sparky. Oh, it's Sparky. And it's $1,800. For the pony? Yeah, I feel like that's not bad. What? It's so expensive. For like a big animal? I'm thinking more of like when I was a kid and I asked my parents for a pony and I didn't understand why they said no until you just told me it was $1,800. Yeah, that was a pony, yeah. So <laughs> you guys, whoever wins is uh, going to get that pony. And it's going to cost you $2,500 a year to house your $1,800 pony. <laughs> now, who will win the pony, right? So on the count of three, everybody call out a name. Who you think is going to win the scavenger hunt? Lulu, Allison, Mike, or Sarah. Ready? One, two, three. Sarah! Allison. I said Sarah. I said Allison because you're so competitive. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? You guys said Sarah? Yeah. I heard a couple Sarahs. We're on the same page. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> so, Sarah, congratulations <laughs> on winning, Sparky. <laughs> you now have a house that lives in your home. A house? And we've already covered this. You said a house. A horse. <laughs> oh, it's only one letter away. Mm. Grace, you get a horse. I mean, it's a pony. It's yeah. like a... It's it, it will grow, grow into, into a, a horse. horse. <sighs> okay. So now next, I was going to go horseback riding so that we can bring Sparky along. But believe it or not, they do not allow you to bring your own horse. <laughs> it's not BYOH? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man, I hate those ranches. Like, I was a little surprised. That you couldn't bring your own horse to a vacation ranch? Yeah. I guess. I okay, mean, I'm paying that, that much money. If I have a pony, I can't bring my pony? It's probably because they don't want to be liable for taking care of your living animal. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right, so instead, I have a solution. We are going to learn frontier skills. It's a class, okay? So the ranch provides their own advanced trained outdoorsmen and women to teach basic survival skills in order to survive in the wilderness overnight. Okay, so instruction includes water sourcing, mm. snares, <laughs> like the drums, fire building, I enjoy heat, and shelter building. I what? Like survivor training. Yeah. You mean if you don't know how to build a shelter, you don't get a shelter? Yeah. Yeah. What? This is the worst. If you're in the wilderness and you don't ha know how to build a shelter, you don't get a shelter. Right. That's why I don't go in the wilderness. Unless you find a cave. That's true. And Unless you roll you the stone away. <laughs> I know. But you know what? It's a three-night <laughs> 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 Oh, goodness. Okay. So... I'm going to want to remember all of this valuable information that we're going to learn. Oh, at the survival class. Yes. Yes. So I bought all of us the new Hero 9 GoPros. Oh, those So are we fancy. can video what we're learning. <laughs> so for all of us, that cost me 1000 Oh, no. Did I buy all of them? All the new Hero Go oh, It might just be one. <laughs> How much are Hero GoPros? Probably like three. Oh, yeah, I bought all of them. <laughs> okay, so I bought us four Hero GoPros, $1,399.92. Okay. For four of them. And we need the head strap for hands free learning. <laughs> okay. Right? <laughs> so for four of those, for all of us, it cost me $79.96. So now we all have the Hero GoPros on our head. Yes. So that while we're, we're learning how to build shelter uh -huh. and the fires, uh -huh. we are taking footage of what we're doing. So uh -huh. later we can reflect on that footage and study it and, you know, mark it to memory <laughs> so that when things happen and the zombie apocalypse hits and we you know, have to go to south of the border, <laughs> that we're ready to survive. Yes, Lulu. Just to be clear, this is the romance package. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh. Right. All right. So now we're going to have lunch in the buckle barn. We're going to enjoy. Just to be clear, <laughs> <laughs> this is the romance <laughs> package. Yeah, the buckle barn. Uh, <laughs> we're going to enjoy a Copper City chopped sandwich, Montana Wagyu beef, uh, fresh salad, and sweet potato sandwich. Okay. Then we're going to head over to their 25,000-gallon outdoor heated pool and hot tub. <laughs> is 
five pounds gallons a big pool I or small? I don't actually pool? think it is. It sounds big, but I don't think it's very big. Because if you took like 25,000 gallons of milk and put them in a pool, I don't think it'd be that big. Why would you put 25,000 <laughs> gallons of milk in a pool? <laughs> it's the only gallon jug I could think of really fast <laughs> was the size of the milk. I could have gone with w- water. would have been <laughs> such a better choice. That's literally what I just said. <laughs> You're right. Water also comes in jugs, everyone, just in case you wanted to know. Before we keep going, I'd like to pause, and I'd like Lulu to tell everyone (laughs) what's in her cup. (laughs) Hi, everybody. (laughs) I'm drinking amazing jalapeno-infused vodka made by Sarah Hankins, who's sitting in the driveway. (laughs) Woohoo! She made this, and it's mixed with lemonade. Mm. Sarah, how do you make this? You just, the jalapeno-infused vodka? Yeah. Oh, well, you just cut up jalapenos. You <laughs> take away the seeds and the veins and mm-hmm. the, um, what is it, the stem. Yes. You discard those, and then you cut up the jalapeno into strips. Oh, And yes. you put it in a mason jar, and you fill fill up the rest of the mason jar with vodka. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Cheap vodka. Cheap vodka. Cheap vodka. Like the kind they would spray my costume with? Exactly. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love that. It's that real classy vodka. And then you leave it in your refrigerator for a week or two weeks. Shake it up every other day, if you remember. And right. there you go. So it's important to note that the process of this can also be called moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> so what I was going for here is, Lulu, what's in the cup? <laughs> It is um, artisanal moonshine. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so next, you guys, I'm so excited about this. This is going to put the romance in romance package. Okay, because so far we've built a shelter (laughs) and we have GoPros on our heads. But now it's time. uh, You know. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) So now we're going to do Creekside Wagon Massages. Why is it weird? First of all, <laughs> oh my god, it's a creek. That's weird. <laughs> We're on a ranch. <laughs> I get it. But secondly, are we on a wagon? We're is in a wagon, wagon near us. They are tur- we all in the same wagon? No. Do we all get our own wagon? Oh. <laughs> um, no, they turned a covered wagon into a spa room. If it's that had been real in the Oregon Trail, I would have done much better. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, like on on the game. Yeah, yeah. I no, it sits outside. <laughs> yeah, it sits outside on the Blue Ribbon Rock Creek, and you get a massage in this. It's like a luxury spa room, but it was a wagon that they like bring out. So it looks like a wagon on the outside, but and on a the modern, inside, beautiful spa retreat. Yeah, on the inside? I mean, yeah, because listen, it's two hundred dollars for the service, plus uh, price of the pr- mm, wait. $200 for Creekside service. So it's $200 to even put it on the creek. <laughs> okay? To put the wagon on the creek. It is $200 to wow. put the wagon on the creek. That's a lot of money. That does not include the massage. <laughs> what? That's how lux it is. <laughs> okay? So, guess how much it is for a 30-minute. I couldn't even get you guys a 60-minute massage. A 30-minute massage and in there. And this is not including the not location including fee. The $200 location fee I already had to pay for. Okay. okay. 800 bucks. How long is massage? 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Yep. I'm going to go 80 bucks. Nope. Oh, okay. I'm going to go 30 minutes? Yes. I'm going to go 100 bucks? Nope. No way. Mm, it's not much more, but yeah, no. 110. No. 115? No. 130? Uh, you passed it. I hate this it's game so much. It's $120. $120 for 30 minutes. 30 oh. minutes? Yes. So, for all four of us, Michael, Sarah, Lulu, and I, to get massages in the Creekside wagon covered, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, $1,280. Crazy. Wait. Are we all in our own wagon, though? I don't know specifics. It's just weird. I do know. Well, massages. <laughs> it is the romance package. <laughs> so, someone's romance. Yes. Um, okay. So every night between five and seven, they bring the bar <gasps> to you. Yes. Wait. Yes. To the barn. To the barn. <gasps> like your roadie. Yep. Yes. Yes. 
So it says their bartenders will craft you seasonal cocktails so oh. you can toast to the day's adventures from the comfort of your accommodations. What are they wearing? Right? That is a great question. You know what they're wearing? They're wearing cowboy hats <laughs> that have helmets inside. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So then what's cool about their dinners is that every single day is something different. So I could look and see the menu for every single day. I picked Wednesday because that's when this episode will release. So on Wednesday, we're going to get Northwest Barbecue and S'mores. Ooh, okay. Yes. So it features classic smoked meats served alongside smoked oysters in Calabrian chili, all cooked in Dutch ovens. Calabrian, These are Calab- real oysters, right? I don't. Wha- Not like oysters you would have in Montana. I don't know. Like, what's a mo- oyster you would have in Montana? Uh, something that's not really an oyster. I don't. I. It, I'm. I'm sure for this price that we're paying, it's real. Because Montana is not near water. Mm-hmm. I think they're just doing oysters for those people who don't eat, like, meat. Okay. Because is Montana where they do Rocky Mountain oysters? I don't know. Oh. Right? Is that not a real oyster? No. no. It is. You know what? This is my day, and I don't eat oysters. Listen, <laughs> it's so a it part of an animal that you would need to call a different name, and so they called them oysters. <laughs> And the animal is a boy. Oh, oh. like the balls. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, I was trying to talk around it, but yes, the balls. Wait, they eat that? Rocky Mountain oysters. That's a thing, right? Yeah. 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 Are they, they good? No. no. Would you? No. Yes. Wait, wait. We no. asked questions Romance at the same package. time. No. Wait. <laughs> what? Wait. Wait. Because I said, have you had it? And she said, do you like it? What was the answer? Have you had them? No. Grace hasn't <laughs> had them. <laughs> <laughs> Would you eat those? You don't know. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> oh God. No, moving on. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so next, after. Oh, I have a question. Mike, do you mm. play guitar? No. Oh. Sorry. Well, you do in my dream world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> she just gave you a skill. Thank okay, you. so in my imaginary travel day, you play guitar. So I bought you. A used, because I don't have much money yet, um, or left. A used Rogue Starter Acoustic. Oh, it's a starter. <laughs> yeah. So y- it's a good. It's good for you. A starter acoustic guitar. It happens to be pink, but it was the cheapest one I could find. So it's forty five dollars <laughs> and ninety nine cents <laughs> for this guitar. So we're gonna all sit around the campfire, and you're gonna play, and we're gonna sing songs. Western songs? Sure. Cowboy songs? Want. Yeah, whatever we the want. The theme song to Hey Dude, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> and so that brings my Dude Ranch Day to a total of $9,995.83. So yeah, I could have probably, like, tipped somebody. <laughs> so close. <laughs> so close. But that's good, Unless though. Congratulations. Thanks. No, it's okay. I know you're competitive. Yeah. You still win. Yeah. Everyone's a winner here at 10K Dollar Day. Here we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so that's what we would do if we spent $10,000 in Easter Island or uh, somewhere in Montana. <laughs> Plains- <laughs> oh, no. Plainsburg? Phillipsburg, Montana. <laughs> Phillipsburg, Montana. Yes. But if we had $10,000 to give away, this is how we would do it. I would give mine to the Easter Island Foundation. Okay. Uh, the link is going to be on our blog at 10 com slash blog. All right. And it, the mission, well, when it first started in the early 80s, the mission was to build a library on Easter Island because they didn't have one and to promote awareness of the island's fragile heritage. So since 1982, they have created that that, n- that library. They created an anthropological, mm-mm, anthropological, yeah, anthropological, sure. anthropological museum. It's in... Um, Spanish on here, so I was like, Museo Antropologico, uh, and um, another historical museum on Easter Island. They've created scholarships uh, for undergraduate students students of Rapa Nui ancestry. They have established processes to provide grants for research. They publish books about Easter Island, so they're doing a lot, right? And they're really working for the Indigenous Guides Association and their schools on Easter Island. Amazing foundation. I would give them $10,000 in a heartbeat, and you can find that link on 10kdollarday.com slash blog. 
That's right. Nice. And so you can find my charity on the blog as well. And I found the foundation of the Granite County Hospital District. And what they do is they provide uh, support to all of the hospitals there in that area in Montana and to its patients, which is really oh, cool. They have a ton cool. of different outreaches that you can go to their website, which will be on our blog. So check that out. And again, right now is such an important time to help hospitals and nurses and doctors during this pandemic. So make sure you check that out when you can. I love that. And thank you for everybody who is supporting us as part of their charitable giving. Um, you can do that at patreon.com slash 10k dollar day. Allison, tell them about it. Yes, Patreon is a uh, platform where you can support artists who are kind of just doing their passion projects like this. Hey. Uh, from a garage. <laughs> that's from right. A you dream big enough, you can do a job in a garage. Yeah. <laughs> Jealous? Yeah. You're welcome. So, yeah, just check out that page, 10 kdollardaycom slash Patreon. And for as little as $2 a month, you can become a supporter of 10 k Day. You always get all of our content for free. So if you enjoy it and if it means something to you, think about giving monthly. And it just helps us with our cost and keeping this content alive and uh, keep going. Yeah. And thank you to everybody who is already supporting us. You have no idea. We could not have kept going for three years and counting without you because it really allows us to just create. Yeah. So thank you for letting us be a part of your lives and for being a part of your weekly routine. It really means a lot to us that we can keep going. So um, that brings us to our happies. Allison Burns, what's your happy? My happy is that we are set up in this amazing garage and we have some amazing art all <laughs> over our table here designed mm -hmm. by Grace who is in the corner over there and I was so happy when I drove up in this van and saw this amazing artwork with our names and our logo and obviously someone now I know it's Grace <laughs> had taken the time to sit down and just show us that where we were coming to meant something and that it was important and that it she took time out of her uh, <laughs> that she took time out of her day to make us feel good so thanks she thinks I'm weird <laughs> <laughs> God, you have to tell me when you're as a sentimental because you have to go last <laughs> keep going I'm happy we got a power inverter for the minivan <laughs> It makes me happy every time we turn it on. It means we can plug things in. Mm -hmm. We got this thing that goes into the cigarette lighter. Oh, yeah, and it's nice. And um, my dad, who's an electrical engineer, helped us set it up. And so we have, US we have like, USB hookups and real plugs, like the three-prong plugs. We can uh -huh. charge everything while we drive, which is incredible. And that's my happy, but um, I should have uh, <laughs> gone with Grace or <laughs> Isaac, who also did our – clapboard or even anybody there's people here who made us drinks and <laughs> cooked us food and let us into their house and all that kind of stuff <laughs> so <laughs> you guys are awesome too and i picked the inverter <laughs> la, 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 there she is not sentimental at all <laughs> who cares uh, so <laughs> great um you have anything else to say or cry about before we end? <laughs> no. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. How are you feeling? I am feeling so good. Great. Why don't you do the credits? Okay. <laughs> 10K Dollar Day. 10K Dollar Day is produced by Ash Burns. Intro by Stan Collins. The 10K Jingle is by Rockwell and Rose. Graphic art by Jacob McAllister. 10K Saturday voiceover by Charlie Hume. <laughs> Hume. Do you listen to the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Buzzsprout, as always. They're amazing. And, you know, <laughs> I was farther away from the table than I thought. And say it with us, you guys. With, with friends, friends like, like us. us. Who needs amenities? Amenities. We, we'll take it. Toiletries. <laughs> oh, all of the E's. True. Any of the E's. All of the itties. Cookies. Cookies. <laughs> with friends like us. Who, who needs, needs cookies? cookies? <laughs>